How's it going guys? So, uh, no one left me questions on my last video, so I'm assuming that it was all well understood and the mock quiz that I uh, wrote for you guys today went over semi-well, or very well, here's to hoping. Um, I am going to continue on that path. We're going to learn a lot of things that I think would help you with uh, the bonus problems. Actually, the last lecture that I posted uh, would have helped you with the bonus problems, but I put that in bonus because it wasn't fair. That lesson, that lesson got posted, I believe, the morning of or the ju just the night before the mock quiz was given. So you guys probably wouldn't have seen it before the mock quiz, but whatever. So the last lecture and today's lecture can help you answer a lot of the things that were given as bonus for the mock quiz. Um, that being said, we're just going to continue with talking about series. We're going to jump right into it. Everyone knows the deal. Everyone knows what we're doing here. Well, everyone knows why I'm here by myself uh, recording a lecture. Uh, let's get to it. Um, last time we ended with uh, asking about this series, we showed that this guy converged for this uh, on this interval. Uh, notice how we remember we found the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence. We did that via the ratio test always the ratio test in Cal 2, it's always the ratio test. Someone asks you where a series converges, um, in where a power series converges, you're always going to use the ratio test. Um, there are other ways to do it, but in Cal 2, that's always going to be how you do it. Uh, so we use the ratio test to show that this guy converges absolutely, in fact, on the interval from minus 1 to 1. It does not in converge at 1 or, or, or minus 1. It will only converge strictly in between these numbers. And now the question we want to answer, which is the last one I left you guys with, is what does it converge to? And if you haven't thought about it, uh, pause the video right now, take a few, uh, take a minute at least to think about it. Seriously, look at what this guy is, examine it, and see if you can pick up on the pattern here. This here is x to the n n goes from 0 to infinity, so this is 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the fourth plus dot dot dot. And we know that it converges uh, if, another way to look at this is if absolute value of x is less than 1. If x is less than 1 in absolute values, which is a big hint hint wink wink, that should give you some idea, uh, hopefully it gives you some idea. So I'll give you three seconds to pause the video and think about it and start it again in another minute. Three, two, one. Okay, so hopefully you thought about it and hopefully what you figured out is um, this is a that's right, it's a geometric series. With a equals one, and your r is equal to x. Uh, so your first term of this geometric series is one, and you keep multiplying by the same thing, namely you're multiplying x. One times x is x, x times x is x squared, x squared times x is x cubed, etc. Uh, this follows the pattern of a geometric series, and since the r is x and it is less than 1 in absolute value, we know that this guy converges by the geometric series test, in fact. So we use the uh, ratio test to actually prove this for a power series, but the geometric series test also works here. And so if you realize that this is a geometric series, that tells you what this guy converges to. This would equal to 1 over 1 minus x. Now. That is a very interesting proposition. Basically what I'm trying to say is that this infinite polynomial, what we call the power series, what we introduced last time, we can think of that guy as this function, right? 1 over 1 minus x, we can think of as being equal to 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot, 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 dot. This, in fact, this is going to be something that we're going to uh, memorize. In fact, I want you to memorize it. It's a very important fact. Um, 
of course, you're going to memorize that it's equal to the series. It's a nicer way to write down the same thing. Uh, so this is equal to the series of x to the n, n goes from 0 to infinity. Uh, that is, of course, 1 plus x plus x squared plus dot, 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 dot. And this works for uh, if your x is between 1 and minus 1, in, not including the endpoints. Okay. What does that mean? Well, uh, it means, and this is kind of segue into, this is kind of moving into the territory that I'm eventually going to want to capitalize on in this lecture and in the next lecture, on how we can make use of series. What this is basically saying is that if I have a function, 1 over 1 minus x, and we kind of know what that guy looks like, well, we should know what that guy looks like. Right? So that has an asymptote at x equals 1. And it would look like, well, this part and that part. That you should know how to graph because that's just, that's where the vertical asymptote is. And it's uh, because the x is negative, we know it's flipped upside down. So we have this picture. And basically what we're seeing is between minus 1 and 1, so here, open circle, this whole part of the graph here, that is represented by 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus dot, dot, dot. This location of the graph, I can write this function as this infinite polynomial once I'm within this window. Now, you might wonder why this guy, why that might be useful, but I think you can already see why that's useful. Basically, I can interpret this guy, which is a rational function, somewhat in the same way that I can interpret a polynomial. These two things will have the same outputs if my inputs are between uh, minus 1 and 1. So you'll notice I can plug in x equal to 0 here, and I would get 1 as the answer. If I plug in x equals 0 here, I again get 1 as the answer. They will coincide for all points in that region. There is a way to think of this function as an infinite series in that region. Now that is a very, very powerful thing to be able to do. It is so convenient, so wonderfully awesome that we can do that thing, it's not even funny. In fact, a part of, am I gonna get into that? I don't, I don't remember. It's, it's definitely coming right up. If I don't get to it today, I will definitely get to it by the next lecture. A big part of the next thing that we want to accomplish is being able to do this for other kinds of functions. Being able to see some function and write it as a series and take advantage of being able to do that. That is a very useful thing. It's a very um, nice thing to be able to do because polynomials are very nice mathematical creatures to, to play around with. Um, so that's one thing I want you to appreciate. So the answer is the series n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n actually converges to this function. 1 over 1 minus x, it works in this region. And this is something we'll also get into, definitely not in this lecture, but uh, you can think of this function as exactly being equal to this infinite series. Like, they're one and the same. It looks like you're writing down different things, but you're not. This equality is a bona fide equality. The left side and the right side are exactly the same mathematically indistinguishable as long as you are within the right window. And that's going to be very important. The fact that I can literally replace that function, 1 over 1 minus x, with this series. It's going to be very, very useful. So that's the first thing. Let me grab my notes here. I've got some bullet points for today's lecture. All right. So what we're going to do is to, first of all, show you some ways in which this is useful.
Now, first of all, uh, it turns out that we can use this right away with what we have now to find power series of certain other functions. And they can look uh, very different from uh, the 1 over 1 minus x function. Um, but we're going to use the fact that we know how to write 1 over 1 minus x uh, to help us do other things. So for example, I am going to do, I'm going to figure out what the power series is representations or uh, I'm going to have three functions. One is 1 over 3 plus x and the other one one over 3 plus x squared and the other one is ln of 3 plus x. So copy those down. If you feel like you're all about this series stuff, you know what's going on, you totally got this under control, what you can do is pause this video, you can get through all these three problems. Uh, should take you uh, six minutes, something like that, um, if you are an expert just to like write everything out. Um, but if, uh, if you are a little bit shaky, what you want to do is you want to take it one step at a time, probably go along with me and at least try to attempt each problem before I attempt it or at least try to use a hint that I might give before I actually start to do the problem. But you should pause the video, especially when I prompt you, but even when I don't prompt you. Sometimes if I'm just going along rambling and I'm going to start to work something out, and you know, you should just pause the video if you're not sure if you even know what's going on at the time. Just pause the video and try to play around with things, see if you understand. That is what's going to help you in these trying times when you don't have direct access to the tutoring center and seeing people in person and meeting me in office hours, which... Uh, no one actually hit me up for office hours, actually. Um, but yeah, anyway. Let's just get, jump, jump into this. Um, ba -ba -ba. So my office hours are tomorrow, which this is probably going to be posted that morning. So if you're watching this in the morning and you want to see me during office hours in the afternoon, you should probably send me an email, let me know. Um, but uh, let's actually just continue. How can we write this guy uh, these three different functions as a series and the trick is we're going to actually use the series that I started this lecture off with on all in all three instances and we're going to use uh, varying techniques but it should give you an idea of the power of being able to write one thing as a series and being able to use that on other things okay so uh, I'll start off easy you might not uh, know how things are going to work out here but what I can do for you is, let's go through the first one, and you can take a crack at the other two. So first of all, let me tell you what my goal is going to be. What I want to do is I want to manipulate this thing so that it, it kind of looks like 1 over 1 minus x. And because 1 over 1 minus x is a series, if I get it to morph into something that looks like 1 over 1 minus x, I can transform it into its series version. So uh, maybe take a few seconds, pause the video right now, and try to get that guy to look like 1 over 1 minus x. Pause the video. 3, 2, 1. Did you pause it? Okay, so here's how we go about doing that. Um, 1, the 3 there kind of messes everything up because 1 over 1 minus x, the constant needs to be a 1. So, first thing I would do is I would factor off the 3. This would result in what's going to be left here. Pause the video, try it. Okay, that's right. You will have 1 plus 
x over 3 left over. Um, now, again, I want this to look like something like 1 over 1 minus x. But there's a plus sign here. How do I do that? Right, you can write plus as a negative of a negative. So I would have this as 1 third, 1 over 1 minus a minus x over 3. Now this guy here kind of looks like 1 over 1 minus x, 1 over 1 minus some variable. However, this variable here is just negative 1 third of some other variable. However, I can actually just transform that into the series. This is n goes from 0 to infinity of, well, it's whatever the variable is to the n. So this ends up being one third, the series, n goes from 0 to infinity of minus 1 to the n, x to the n over 3 to the n. And in fact, I can clean this up a little bit by multiplying the constant in. We know that that's something that we can do in series. So I get the series and that's my guy. I can think of this as 1 over 3 plus x. So knowing the series for 1 over 1 minus x, with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, I could figure out the series of this guy. And you could imagine that for any constant here, any constant coefficient of x, I could do this. I could even do this if, if, it, if it, even if it's not a linear function specifically. But you might want to ask the question, uh, where does this work? Right? So we know that uh, 1 over 1 minus x uh, equals the series of x to the n, n goes from 0 to infinity, if uh, our x in absolute value is less than 1. This stands to reason, where does this work? This stands to reason if I have 1 over 1 minus minus x over 3, that is going to give me the series of, uh, well, minus x over 3 which, just by matching up with what we know here, this is going to work if our minus x over 3 is less than 1 in absolute value. Or, in other words, if my x is less than 3 in absolute values. So not only do I know how to represent this as a series, a power series, I also can figure out where is this actually going to work. This guy is represented by that series, and it will work for all x's between minus 3 and 3. just found the power series for that thing. Uh, okay, what about uh, the second guy? Uh, 1 over 3 plus x squared. 
pause the video and try to think of a way that we can figure out the power series of that guy. Now here's something that a lot of students might think at first glance. Um, well, this is just equal to 1 over 3 plus x times 1 over 3 plus x, isn't it? So we can just multiply the series. which technically isn't wrong, uh, but it's not going to be very efficient. Uh, what would it take to multiply a series? Remember, uh, a multiplication of a series is not the series of the multiplications. That wasn't a property, that was actually a warning. So it's actually really hard to multiply two series. I'm going to have to be multiplying out two sets of parentheses with an infinite number of things in each parenthesis. It's not going to be very could probably do it after a really long time, but even someone who knows what they're doing, even if I were to do this, it will take me a really long time to come up with the answer. There's actually a much more efficient way of thinking of uh, the squared version as opposed to literally think of it as a square. Uh, so my hint would be to you, um, start thinking more of other ways to go from something like, uh, 1 over x to something that looks like 1 over x squared. Can you think of something that can give you something very similar um, without actually squaring? Now, I'm hoping that me writing this might uh, trigger something in your mind. If you see it, shout it out. Do you see it? So here's the trick. If I take the derivative of 1 over x, I get minus 1 over x squared. This allows me to actually get a square in the denominator without actually squaring something. If I could uh, take a derivative. Um, and so that's kind of going to be the hint here. So we are allowed to use calculus as an algebraic manipulation here. Um, so let's see how we would actually deal with the 1 over 3 plus x all squared. Now that I actually told you this, uh, that derivatives is how you'd probably want to approach this problem, pause the video right now and try it. 3, 2, 1. OK, so hopefully you actually tried it. Again, I am begging you guys to please actually try stuff and don't just watch me. If you just watch me do everything, it will not help you. It's not going to help you, especially if you're in the situation where you haven't been doing so well in the class and you really need to make up your grade, you really need a lot of improvement. It's going to take your own elbow grease. You just watching me is not going to help you come back from oblivion. Okay, so please, when I ask you to pause the video, pause the video, try it. Watch the videos, actually attempt things. If you get stuck, ask me questions. Um, so. All my other classes, when I post these videos, they ask me questions. I don't really get any questions from my Calc 2 class. And it's not because you all know what's going on, um, because Calc 2 class is a very tough class. All Calc 2 classes have a lot of trouble. So hopefully you're trying things, you're following what I'm trying to say, and you're actually paying attention. And you should actually ask me questions. Actually engage with me when you can. And, yeah. Let's move on. B. So your f of x is 1 over 3 plus x squared. One thing you can notice is that this is of course, there's going to be a negative sign applied here because we know that derivative of 1 over x is minus 1 over x squared. But this is just the negative derivative of 1 over 3 plus x. If I take the derivative of that and multiply by a negative 1, that would be the answer. So now, 
it turns out we actually know how to write this as a series. Do I remember how to write that as a series? Should have erased it. Uh, this is going to be the series. This is not something you would know by heart, it's just a, a random example. Minus 1 to the n, x to the n over 3 to the n plus 1 was what we saw last time. So how do we actually differentiate this infinite sum? Well, we know that to differentiate a sum, you take the sum of the derivatives. That only works in the finite case, except there's one special case when it comes to infinite sums where we can do this, and that was if... That's right, it happens if we have absolute convergence. And we do know that we do have absolute convergence because when we're doing the series of 1 over 1 minus x, the series for that, we use the ratio test and we forced convergence to happen, which means whenever it converges, it will converge absolutely. So 1 over 1 minus x, uh, if we represent that as a series, that's just the sum as n approaches 0 to infinity, n from, goes from 0 to infinity, of x to the n, that actually approaches 1 over 1 minus x absolutely. It converges there absolutely. And so what we can do here is you can switch the summation and the derivative. And we can just differentiate the sum. And we're allowed to do this Is absolutely. We're allowed to swap the roles of the sum and the derivative. Um, by the way, this also works with integration, by the way. And, and when I brought up the rearrangement theorem many lectures ago, uh, this was one of the things that I said would actually, uh, would actually come in handy later. So we can do that. Now, what is the, de this is negative. The summation. What is the derivative of this? Anyone? Want to say what the derivative of this is? Anyone? Bueller? Okay. So, hopefully, what you would have said is that, well, this part here is a constant because I'm doing d dx, taking the derivative with respect to x, so x is my variable. So this whole thing here is just a constant as far as the derivative is concerned. So really, I'm just differentiating x to the n, and hopefully we all know by now how to differentiate x to the n. That's straight up power rule. Um, so this is going to be minus 1 to the n n x to the n minus 1, and you leave this guy over here. Now the minus 1 I can bring inside, and just to make it look a little bit cleaner. So instead of minus 1 to the n, I now have minus 1 to the n plus 1. And that's my series. So this is actually equal to 1 over 3 plus x squared. So that is part B. So give you some time to copy that down. Or pause the, pause the video and copy it in your old time, but yeah. Moving on. Moving on to uh, part C. And of course, this actually works the same place, actually. So this uh, still works for x less than 3 in absolute values. 
Now, of course, to know that for sure, you could do uh, like a ratio test on this. Now, the fact that I asked you about ln shouldn't bother you too much here after seeing example B. Uh, you might already be seeing the connection between this and part A um, that we can take advantage of. And hopefully you realize that it is integration. So this you can realize, well, this is just the integral of 1 over 3 plus x. And I already know how to write that as a series. So this is the integral of the series, n goes from 0 to infinity, minus 1 to the n, x to the n over 3 to the n plus 1. So that's uh, it's this guy. Now, because of absolute convergence, I can switch the sum and the integral. The integral of a sum is the sum of the integrals in the finite case and in the absolutely convergent series case. If it was a condition convergent series, this cannot be done. It would not work. So I can move the integral inside. And just like last time, we just made the realization that uh, the minus 1 to the n over 3 to the n plus 1 is just a constant. So really, the integral only cares about the x to the n. So we again apply the power rule for integrals this time. And you add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So this is going to be minus 1 to the n, x to the n plus 1 over 3 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1. So, so it, uh, into series, I forgot, basics of integration. So for integrals, um, one other thing is there's a plus c here, which by the way, technically you don't have to worry about this really. You can just write it as a plus c, but realize that what this is, it's actually, if I write out this as a series, just it's an infinite number of terms, um, then I integrate term by term, and I can get a plus c for each term, so it's like a C1 plus a C2 plus a C3 plus da da da. So I have a bunch of constants, which is really just a sum of a bunch of C's, which I, I, I just think of that as converging to some constant. I know it's going to converge. Um, so it's just plus a constant. Um, how do we find what that constant is? Well, to find C, plug in a convenient value. What could possibly be a convenient value here? Any ideas? Bueller? Well, I mentioned 
a while ago, was it last lecture or lecture before, that figuring out what a series converges to is very difficult in general. So if I plug an x value in here that leaves this series thing for me to compute, that's actually going to be very hard. Um, so what I probably want to do here is plug in something that's going to simplify this series a lot. Um, and as long as my x is between uh, minus 3 and 3, uh, I'm kind of allowed to plug in anything. So what I would plug in here is probably the number 0. So what I would do here is plug in x equals 0 to both sides. What would you have on the left side, or right, left side, I guess? Um, this is going to be ln of 3 plus 0. That is going to give us, well, the series of 0 plus uh, c. In other words, my c is just ln of 3. In other words, what I'm saying is i.e. Uh, f of x equals ln of 3 plus x equals ln of 3 plus this series. Right, this says x over 3 to the n plus 1. There, we've wrote it, written it as a series. It's an infinite sum plus all logarithms. Now that's the end of the example, but here's something cool. Plug in x equals 3 to both sides. Now I know we're scared, scared, flirting with death here um, because uh, we know that it converges absolutely for uh, x strictly between minus 3 and plus 3. However, upon going through the integration, we gain something that actually is quite convenient. We ended up dividing by n plus 1. This means if I plug in a constant for x, this is just going to be a constant times an alternating series, namely the alternating harmonic series. Uh, we actually looked at that before. So I know that that actually converges conditionally. Uh, so it turns out that x equals 3 technically works here. It's right on the edge of the things that would work. Um, because once your x hits larger than 3, then this guy now becomes an exponential that's going to overwhelm that guy. And it's actually going to diverge by the test for divergence. But at 3, it's actually going to work out pretty nicely. Um, it will work out in a conditional sense at 3, but leading up to that point, it's actually absolutely convergent. What happens when you plug in 3 to both sides? Well, you get ln of 6 on this side equals ln of 3 plus, well, x equals 3, 3 divided by 3, that's just 1, so I can ignore this part, and I get this thing. Uh, in fact, this leaves me with ln 6 minus ln of 3 is this series.
Now ln of 6 minus ln of 3 is ln of 2 because that's ln of 6 divided by 3. Now, just to make this look a little bit nicer, what I'm going to do with the series here is set k equals n plus 1. This means n equals k minus 1, of course. So if I replace this n with k minus 1, I can add 1 to both sides. So I can start the series from k equals 1. And my n plus 1 here is just k. And now what you will notice, would this give me the same value? Okay, so n equals 0, that will give me plus 1. Then n equals 1 gives me minus a half, plus a third, etc. Okay, so this will also give you the same values. I plug in k equals, if I plug in k equals 1, I want that to give me plus 1, so I'd actually change this to n equals k minus 1. Which is in fact the same as, uh, it would give you the same kind of behavior as k plus 1, if you wanted to look at it that way. Um, that is equal to ln of 2. In fact, by factoring off a negative here, write this as minus 1 to the k over k, k goes from 1 to infinity, you will get the fact that uh, the alternating harmonic series adds up to we know that converges, it converges conditionally. What does it converge to conditionally? Minus ln2. Now this is something that I mentioned in class before. But now you can see a very nice way to actually get that. That's very interesting, isn't it? Right? So there was also a situation where I told you that the series of 1 over n squared adds up to pi over 6. Uh, and you might wonder, where did the pi over 6 comes from? And then I also mentioned that the alternating harmonic adds up to minus ln2. You might have wondered, where did the ln come from? Well, now you're starting to see, once you start to use calculus in order to deal with series, um, that's where these strange functions seem to come from. But uh, that's what they add up to. This, this has to all work out. And that's because this function is this series. Um, they're exactly the same thing. Whatever is true for this function is going to be true for that series. And so um, once you're within the right window, of course. And so that way we can figure out a lot of things. So there are times when we can actually figure out what series add up to using calculus. Um, I just thought I'd show you that to you. That's just uh, something that I think is pretty cool uh, that you might enjoy. Um, figuring out what the sum of 1 over uh, n squared is n goes from 1 to infinity is a little bit more difficult. It's still a little bit outside of the scope of this class or, or what I'd want to show you at this point. Um, but yeah, how much time do we have left? Oh, we're almost out of time. No. Here's something I would leave you with. Uh, actually try this. Might put it on a mock quiz, might put it on the actual final, I don't know. Find a power series. Representation of uh, f of x equals b 
the inverse tangent function. You can do it based on what we know so far. Um, pretty much you're going to want to find something that's connected to the inverse tangent that looks like something that you know a power series for and pretty much we only know what one, we really know one generic power series uh, formula right now so that kind of tells you who you're going to look at. You're going to somehow want to connect that guy to 1 over 1 minus x. Probably using some sort of algebra or calculus to make the connection but uh, try to figure out a connection to that. And think of all the rules that you know about inverse tangent and uh, that will be of use to you, of help. But doing a, a problem like that is a, a bona fide uh, test problem. So I can just give you a function and say, hey, find a power series for this function. Um, there are going to be other methods that we're going to get into when we start talking about Taylor series and Taylor polynomials. But for now, you can actually use what we know so far to actually uh, do that guy. Um, let's see. In the last few minutes, let's look at another use. So actually try that question. Pause the video, copy it down. Three, two, one. Okay, hopefully you paused it. power series to compute integrals. Okay, so here's an example. We want to integrate, did I make it a definite integral or yes, let's, let's make it a definite integral. Zero to one of x over one plus x to the ninth. Now if you try to plug in just the uh, indefinite integral here into Wolfram Alpha, you will see a very ugly answer. It's not an easy integral to compute. Not that it's impossible, you can actually find an antiderivative here. We will actually look at some uh, impossible integrals later on. Impossible in the sense that you can't actually do it with any of the methods that I've shown you in this class. And it's not because it's hard, but because it's impossible. Um, this one though is doable with a lot, of, uh, a lot of effort. You're not going to actually want to do it by hand. Type that into Wolfram Alpha, the indefinite integral, and you'll see the mess that results. If you type the indefinite integral into symbol lab, it won't even be able to give you an answer. It'll try to compute it, and it'll actually run out of computing time. Um, so it is a tough integral to actually do. We are going to do this by hand, though, and we are not going to get the answer into what's called closed form. Maybe I'll talk about that in a, in a in future lecture. Um, but I will be able to get this in a series form. I will know the answer as a series. And, by the way, knowing that I, the answer as a series can allow us to approximate that series to get an answer within some tolerance that we want, right? I, we already covered series estimation theorems. So, having the answer as a series is actually a pretty good thing for practical purposes. Uh, certain people might not like it because it's not the exact answer. You can't actually write it down in a very nice, compact, closed form. Um, but for many cases, that is more than good enough to actually have a series answer to an integral because you can just have a computer approximate it. Um, so here's how we would do this. First of all, maybe pause the video and try. And here's a little exercise that you can use. Uh, so I'm not going to say pause it every time, but I'm going to try to work this out. Try to stay one step ahead of me. So pause the video after I make every step and try to see, could you figure out the next step? Then try it on your piece of paper and then play the video and say, do you do the same step? Pause it again. If not, you just follow my step and then try to figure out the next step and just keep pausing me. 
as it goes on and try to figure out the steps before I actually do them. But here would be the first step that I would take here. Factor out an x. Okay, pause the video. What do you think the next step is? Now, if you see the next step, you probably know why I made that the first step. Uh, it's because I want to start making the thing that I have look like the 1 over 1 minus x, 1 over 1 minus a variable. I know how to change that to a series. So the x wasn't messing things up because it was on the top. So now I can get a 1 on top by just factoring the x off. That plus sign is messing things up, so I write as minus a negative. And now what I can do is I can introduce a series in this situation. Namely, put in minus x to the ninth. in my series formula. Now, of course, as far as the series is concerned, the series goes by n, so x is a constant. I can multiply that x back in, so I would have the series of minus 1 to the n, x to the, this is x to the 9n. When I multiply that x in, I get 9n plus 1. Now, I know about this series. This guy is actually going to converge absolutely to that guy as long as my x to the ninth is less than 1 in absolute value, which means as long as x is less than 1 in absolute value. So we're kind of skirting the edges here, but notice that I just created an alternating series test. So uh, it's actually going to be quite all right. Um, so now what we can do is because of absolute convergence, I can swap the series and the integral. And now I only have to integrate this part. How do I integrate that part? Well, the power rule, of course. Um, because my minus 1 to the n is a constant, so from here, just back, my minus 1 to the n is a constant, so this is just going to be the series minus 1 to the n x to the 9n plus 2, because I add 1 to the power, divide by the new power, 9n plus 2. It's a definite integral, so this is between 0 and 1. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in 1 for x. And then I would just have minus 1 to the n on top over 9n plus 2, minus plugging in 0 for x. Well, that's just 0. So that is actually the answer as a series. You'll notice that it's an alternating series. You'll also notice that it will converge uh, conditionally speaking. And we have something called the alternating series approximation theorem. So I can actually know how to approximate this to within any number of decimal places I want. Just make sure that the n plus, the magnitude of the n plus first term is less than the error that I want to have. Set that up, solve for n, and I can, so, to have an error less than k, all I need to do is just set up that 1 over 9 times, remember the n plus first term, I want to be less than k, and solve for n. Then you just have your computer add up that many terms of the ser series, and you will actually have this guy as an answer correct to any number of decimal places you want, which can be described by k. This works by 
the alternating series approximation theorem. And uh, that's that's that. So this gives me a series way to talk about the answer to a definite integral that was very hard to compute. It would be very, 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 very hard to compute by hand. Not impossible, but it's going to be very difficult. Uh, but you can kind of see where the benefits are coming in. You can kind of see uh, how series can come in useful, even in situations where we might have an impossible integral. We're going to look at that pretty soon. Uh, in the meantime, Yeah, in the meantime, try to find the power series for a tangent inverse. I had some other things planned, but we are pretty much out of time. In fact, we're like five minutes over time. Uh, let's, uh, let's wrap up there. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully you're st uh, still going strong, still safe, hopefully still studying, working hard, all that good stuff. I will see you guys in the next lecture. Drop your questions down on this lecture, which there are probably a lot of things you have questions about. You can drop them in the comment section or you can email me uh, through Jupyter Grades. Also, remember office hours is going to be tomorrow or if I don't get to compress this because I, I have a few more lectures to record. If I don't get to upload this before the morning of Wednesday, then office hours is going to be this afternoon. So shoot me an email as soon as you watch this and we can try to set something up. Uh, that being said, have a good night, and yeah, we're, we're doing some pretty cool stuff. Hopefully you're as excited about all this as I am. Uh, ciao.